how do we sketch neural circuits? So it's a lot easier to sketch simple versions of neurons rather than the complicated way neurons really look when we're doing neural circuits. So the convention is instead of drawing dendrites, we just draw dendrites not shown. and a cell body. And one or more axon terminals from one axon. So we have an axon and axon terminals. In other words, the presynaptic cell um, at synapses. So when we draw this, we're always talking about the cell and the information in other words, the action potential is going from the cell out to these tips. We don't bother to draw we don't bother to draw dendrites unless we have to. Usually when uh, neuroscientists are drawing neural circuits, they usually don't bother with the dendrites. Because keep in mind, synapses can be on cell bodies. Okay. So what we draw instead is just the cell body and an axon and as many branches as we need. Okay, so when you draw these, that's the direction you should be presuming information is going to go. Okay. The connections can be stimulatory, excitatory, or inhibitory. So excitatory, when we do this, convention is usually that that's excitatory, although you can make it certain by having it be positive. In other words, if you're drawing that, you're implying, for example, that at this synapse, you're opening sodium channels and allowing sodium in to the next cell. Okay, and that would be excitatory. You'd be more likely to summate to minus 45 at the axon hillock with positive charge coming in. Okay. Synapses can also be inhibitory, and the convention is for inhibitory ones is usually to draw them as a bar. That might be, for example, if the neurotransmitter opens a potassium channel. Potassium, remember, will leave. And as it does, it makes the cell more negative, And that's inhibitory. You're less likely to get a new action potential. Okay. If you want to, however, if you want to be sure, you can label that as negative. Okay, so when I'm looking at neural circuits. If you do this, I'll presume you mean excitatory. If you do this, I'll presume you mean that it's excitatory. If you do this, I'll presume that you mean that it's an inhibitory. If you do that, I'll presume it's inhibitory. Finally, what if you do this? If you do that, I'll look at it and assume you mean inhibitory. So that is more important than the flat bar. So when in doubt, you can put a negative by it, meaning inhibitory. You can also indicate it by opening potassium channels and showing potassium coming out. And that, we'll know, means it's going to be negative inside. OK, so let's do a simple neural circuit. So a simple neural circuit might be stretch channels from having your patellar tendon just below your kneecap and your knee jerk reflex tapped and in sensory neurons that would open sodium stretch channels there's a sodium stretch channel and these other little lines represent the fact that it's tethered and so that when the membrane bends it's attached in some way to the um, proteins inside or outside the cell and it opens so here's a stretch And a plus channel, sodium comes in. That is going to cause an action potential. And in a neuron.
general circuit diagram, you wouldn't need to tell me the action potential is going this way. And let's go ahead and label these, neuron A and neuron B. And neuron B, we'd end in, remember this is excitatory, if I do these little open So these are muscle cells. That cause the kick. So this is a simple reflex that you have going from your patellar tendon, just beneath your patellar tendon, through a sensory neuron to motor neurons in your spine that go out to the muscle in your leg that contracts along the top of your thigh, contracts to pull up on the end of your leg and kick. So pull up on the patella and kick your leg. Okay. Okay, you can also have inhibitory ones. So we could add, let's imagine that you were in a situation where you were desperately trying to avoid kicking. Okay. You could propose an inhibitory neuron that inhibited it. And so if you had some input to here and to the stretch channel, perhaps you'd be able to inhibit or per partly inhibit that knee-jerk reflex. Okay. So let's talk about some of the common elements of neural circuits. We have excitation, inhibition, Divergence, in this case from A to B, C, and D, so an action potential would go to all of them and potentially start a new action potential in each of B, C, and D. That's divergence. We have also convergence. And with convergence, you have the possibility of having an action ho happen only if both inputs or if either input 